Hi, welcome to Art with Anorak. I'm Daisy Rogers from the West Hampshire School of Art. And if you joined us last week, you'll know that what we're doing is looking at the wonderful animals of the Anorak world and going on a bit of an adventure with them to see how we can draw them in a really sim simple and manageable way and then have lots of fun colouring them in and other sort of patterns and techniques. So today we're going to look at the kissing bunnies. So a little bit like last week when we looked at the, the kissing badgers, like this badger here on the tablecloth, we're going to look at two bunnies facing each other and we're going to think about the mirror image, drawing one bunny on one side and trying to then flip it over and draw a similar bunny on the other side. Now, like I did last week, I have done a bit of practice first and I have got my two little bunnies that I'm happy with here. And I'm gonna use that as my reference drawing as I go through this process with you, just so that I can make sure that I'm covering all the bits that I wanted to talk to you about. Okay, so make sure you've got some, pa uh, some paper, a pencil and a rubber, and let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my reference drawing off and I'm just going to pop it if it will balance. There we go. I'm going to pop it there so that way we can all see it and um, we can use it as we go through. So the first thing we're going to look at doing is like we did with our hedgehogs and our badgers is breaking down our bunnies into simple shapes. Now, as you can see from this faint outline that I've left here, the first shape we're going to look at is a sort of egg shape lying down on itself which is gonna form the main body of the bunny. So now, like we talked about before, we're gonna think about where we want our bunnies to go on our paper. How big are they going to be? Are they going to be down here because that's where you're going to draw some grass for them to, to be running around on? Or are you just going to go for something quite bold and illustrative like this lovely tablecloth? Now I've got a really fun idea which I wanted to explore with you. So I think let's try this. What I want you to do is like we've got our bunny here, our bunnies here, we're going to find the middle of our paper. It doesn't have to be particularly exact. And I'm just drawing a little line, very faint. So pressing very lightly with our pencils. So I've got something in my eye. Very lightly with our pencils so that if you need to rub it out, you can do. And we're gonna think about how close to that line we want each bunny's nose to be. So I'm going to do a little dot there and a little dot there and I know that the tip of the bunny's nose is going to come to that point there. Okay. Now we're going to talk today about negative space. That may sound a bit complex but don't worry it's actually really easy to understand. But let's get our circles in place first and then it'll make a little bit more sense. So we've done our little points for our noses. Now you can see here I've got a point for my nose and then my circle starts just a little bit further away. So I'm going to just really lightly remember just pop in and with the bottom of my circle I'm just going to flatten it out slightly just to help us along the way. So it's going to look you know, it looks a little bit like a jelly bean. There we go. Okay, and then let's do the same on the other side. So we might as well we might as well do the two at once. Now, if you watched my hedgehog video, you'll remember, was it my hedgehogs? Oh no, I think it was my badgers. My badger video where one badger was much higher up than the other. I think we're at risk of this today with our, with our bunnies, but that's okay. Doesn't matter if they're not exactly the same. So I'm coming round like this and there we go. So that is the fundamental start of our rabbits. The next thing I want to look at is starting with these back legs. 
and the little tail. Okay, so we're going to start with that first. And then we're going to talk about this negative space idea. So first things first, I'm going to look at this. It's like a little triangle, it's like the base of a triangle. If we were to think about it carrying on, it would almost be like we've added a triangle onto the bottom of our, uh, bottom of our bunny's body. So we could almost, if, we, if it helps, you can draw the faint line of the whole triangle in. And then we can just add in the details there. So then we're going to go a little curved line up, down for the little bunny's tummy. And we're going to look at his front paw. Now, have a look at the front paw. Do you see it's lower than this rear set of paws? Okay. So like we've done before, we can always give ourselves some little faint lines, which can be really helpful when we're trying to do a mirror image where we want to think about where the paws are sitting. So this will be the line where our front paws will sit, and this will be the line where our rear paws will sit. Okay. So, and another trick we looked at last week, I'm going to use my pencil I'm going to look at the angle that I used for this paw here and then I can just transfer that down and that tells me that actually that line is steeper. Do you see how useful that technique is? It really helps just to double check and almost our brain sometimes makes things up for us and it, it, it thinks something is how it thinks it is but actually it's worth double checking because it's not always the case. So I now know that I just need to rub out that little line and have my slightly steeper paw there. Okay, and then it's gonna come up and it's going to join the rest of the circle. All right, so we've got our funny shaped jelly bean egg. We've got our little triangle at the back here. Our scoop up, down for the tummy, into this front paw on our line here. And then it's going to come back up and join the circle. Should you try that on the other side? Okay. So what I'm going to do to help myself is put in those lines, those faint lines, where my paws are going to sit. Now this circle has gone a little bit, a little bit out of shape. Okay, so let's remember, first things we're going to look at is that triangle at the back. Remember pressing nice and lightly. There's our triangle. I'm going to come off the circle, cross. And then remember, we're going to scoop up, down for the tummy, and then down for that paw. And that line's going to be a nice diagonal down. And again, we can look at that using the pencil to check my angles. So I can say, okay, that's that side. Let's check this side. Good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And then paw's going to come back up. And it's going to join our circle again. So there we've got, minus its head at the moment, the body of our bunnies. The bodies of our bunnies on both sides. Should we put their tails in? I think let's do that. So now what I want to look at with the tails is think about where that tail is coming in the... Uh, if you were to draw a line down the middle of the bunny and then across, how far down that line is the tail coming? It's about halfway, isn't it? So from the bottom of its tummy to the top of its body, about halfway down is where our tail's going to be. So we can do that trick again here. Just a very faint line. Okay, so we know that our tail is gonna go here. 
Now our tail is like a little tick, going backwards. And go around. Now you can do this bunny tail however you like. If you want to do a nice big fluffy bunny tail, like a little cloud stuck onto its bottom, you absolutely can do. I always think that's the best bit about drawing bunnies, getting the cotton wool out and giving them nice little fluffy bunny tails. outside my window at the moment I've got a chicken who is looking in at me wondering what on earth I'm doing. You might have to draw the chickens at some point. If you've got chickens I'd love to see your drawings of them. Maybe you could do some drawings, tag hashtag Anorak Adventures and pop them up online for me. Get your parents to put them up online because I'd love to see what your chickens look like. Okay so we've done a tail on one side. Now let's that quick trick down the center vertically and the center horizontally and we know that our tail is going to go somewhere here now as i talked about last week particularly when you're drawing mirror image you might find one side easier to draw than the other particularly when you're drawing at an angle like this that's okay don't worry that's completely normal because you're stronger on one side of your uh, your brain really than the other when it comes to drawing. So I'm left-handed, so I find drawing this side easier, the, the right side, than my left side. You might find if you're right-handed that you find drawing the left side easier than the right side. Let me know, it'd be interesting to know. Okay, so we've drawn our little tails. Got our little bunny tails. We've got our little bunny paws. And now we're gonna think about this head shape. Now this is the more complicated part of the bunny. But the way I look at it, and I, I don't know if you'll see this, maybe it's just me, but I see almost like a bunch of carrots. So you know when you see a bunch of carrots, they sort of come like this round and then the body of the carrot stops and then it goes up into the fluffy green leaves at the top. It helps me, me remember that it's a bunny, bunnies like carrots. So maybe that's what it needs to look like. So. Let's give that idea a go. So the first thing we're going to look at is the fact that on both sides, our bunny's head starts just a little bit above where the tail starts. So if we've got our tail here on this line, we're going to think about our bunny's head just starting here. So again, we're using those faint guidelines that we used for working out where the tail's going to go. We're using that again to help us think about the placement of our bunny's head. Okay, so let's think about those, those carrots. <laughs> I think my bunnies have got very big ears. My bunnies might be turning into hares rather than rabbits. Yeah, I think those are a bit big. So what we can also think about doing is from the center of our circle here come down and then remember that curve that we've looked at so many times before in our animals curves up and it's almost like a diagonal line back on itself not too far and if we see where our center line is the ears don't go past it so that's another really useful way of using those guidelines so I know that right there's my centre line. Okay, I've done my ears a little bit too far. So maybe I will stop them there. And I've got one. And then second ear. And they're going to curve back down. And we've got a diagonal going that way. And then down again. And there's that little line that we drew before, that first little dot we drew for where the nose is going to come to. Now it's turned out that my head has gone a bit higher, but that's okay. We're still on the same line, so it's still going to be the same distance away from that centre line. So you can see all these funny little guidelines that we're using. And remember, we can rub those out. That's why we're drawing them so faintly, so they're really just there to help us. 
and then let's draw that circle for the eye. So this could come down a little bit further actually. There we've got one bunny. Now, if you've done one bunny and you're feeling a little bit bunnied out, that's absolutely fine. Press pause, go and get a drink, get some fresh air and come back to it. Okay. So don't feel you have to do this all in one go. And the great thing is, because this particular Anorak adventure is pre-filmed for you, it means you can press pause and come back anytime you like. And you can watch it again and again and again, and you can practice and practice and practice until you're a bunny expert. So now let's do the other side. Okay. Gosh, it really is funny how much harder I find that other side. Okay, up to there and there. Remember using that little curve, and then I'm trying to think about those shapes. I know that it's going to steep up, go steeply up there. It's going to flatten out a bit before it gets to the ears. I'm going to draw a horizontal line there, and I've got my vertical line here. The horizontal line has gone a bit there. And that's going to tell me where the ears on this bunny are going to go, because that's the top of the ears on the first bunny. So I've done the head, I'm going to dip down and I'm going to come up here. Now remember, I don't want my ears to go past that centre line. So that was a useful guideline for us on the first bunny. And then we can come off the circle curve to join the bunny there and give them a little eye. Okay, now what I want to do quickly before we start talking about this negative space idea I mentioned, I'm just going to rub out some of the guidelines that we used <laughs> so we can start seeing that bunny more clearly. I'm going to leave the centre line but I'm just going to rub out inside the bunny's body so that it feels a little bit more bunny-like and a little bit more finished. Okay. That will do for now. Great. Okay. Now, this idea of negative space. What is that? What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is the space that isn't the object you're drawing. So if you think about drawing a line and the space either side of that line is joined together by the line. Now I'm going to draw a little square. That is my positive space. That's the object that I wanted to draw. The space around it, which we'll just use in little dots, is called the negative space. Now this comes in really, really handy. It comes re becomes really useful when we start to think about other shapes that we draw next to it or near it. And then we can use looking at the negative space to help us understand how the two positive space figures, the two objects that we wanted to draw, how they're related to each other, how near they are to each other, how big they are, and also if they're a particularly tricky shape, sometimes looking at the negative space is easier. So when I was drawing my bunnies, I was looking at this and I was thinking, you know what, this, this space in between the bunnies here looks almost like a bell. So you've got, if you did a sort of imaginary line there and there, do you see like in between here? like a bell. So for me, if I do a line there and there, I can use that just to check 
or even draw from the beginning. You can just draw the negative space. So you could just draw a bell shape between and then put your bunnies around it. Now, I'm just going to check. Now I can tell that this bunny has gone a little bit further off that way because I'm drawing at an angle. But fundamentally, fundamentally I'm happy with that. That's 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 fine. And this is just a this is a new term that just helps you to understand different ways of approaching a drawing. Because one way might work for one person, but not really mean much to another. So you might find the way that works for you through all these different techniques and, and terminology, these different names of, of, of tips and tricks that, uh, that I'm teaching you. Okay, so we've got our bunnies. Now, very quickly, I'm going to do some colouring in. But what I really want you to do, because I think it'd be really fun, and I'm going to do this off air and then post a picture of it up on the Anorak feed so that you can see what I mean. But what I'd like you to do is try drawing these bunnies on a piece of cardboard or thick card. Then either ask one of your parents or if you're old enough to use scissors, cut it out yourself. We're gonna use these bunnies little cutouts on thick card or cardboard, we're going to use them as stencils. And I want you to, so you see how we've got on this tablecloth, we've got this beautiful, beautiful group of badges just all over. And there's some little kissing badges here and there's some more here. And then there's one there and then there's another set of badges there. I want you to try and do the same with your bunnies. So maybe get a really nice big piece of um, paper or you could use a another really big piece of cardboard or if you've got a canvas something like that and use your bunny stencil draw around it and that way you don't have to keep drawing bunnies draw around the bunnies put them all over the place put the little bunnies just just tips of the bunny's feet popping out here so you could have bunny's feet like that uh, da, 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 da. and then we have triangle and then up to the bunny's tail it's just going to start coming up there so do you see you can sort of put bunnies wherever you like and then maybe you can color in around the bunnies or paint around the bunnies in one color and then you could paint each different bunny a different color or you could do them all in uh, the same color but different from the background like we've got here we've got this lovely yellow background and then all the badges are the same colours. So have a think about that, it could be really fun. Now I'm just very quickly with my lovely pastel pencils, because I love these and I really want to show them to you. So these are soft pastels, which is like a sort of chalky dust that's been compressed, it's been pressed together into these pencils. And actually, I think I'm going to have a fun pink bunny this morning. And you can see they create a really soft creamy finish, a little bit softer and easier to cover the paper than normal pencils. And then look, I can blend it around to get a really nice finish. So I can colour in my bunny. Pastel pencils are quite soft, they do break, so I have to press quite lightly. Okay. My chickens have come back to say hello. Now a tip when you're colouring in, when you get to the edges, just slow down. Because I know it's quite tricky, isn't it? To get those edges nice and neat when you're colouring something in. 
just slow down around the edges and you can always speed up if you want to in the middle. Now again I'm using that blending, I'm just smudging the little circles with my finger and you can see it just removes some of the pencil marks as I'm drawing and blends it out into a nice flat colour. Don't forget to leave that eye. And again, I'm slowing down around the nose and the face. I'm slowing down around that eye because I don't want to accidentally colour it in. So I'm nearly there. coloured in. And it's our bunny. And what a smart bunny it is. So I'm going to leave it there. You can go and practice as much as you like. Don't forget to tag your lovely creations up online. Get your parents to upload them. Hashtag Anorag Adventures. Hashtag Anorak Adventures. And let me see what you've created. I can't wait to see it. And give it a go, that idea we talked about of drawing your bunnies out as a stencil and creating a lovely range of a whole scene of different bunnies, because I think that would be really good fun. So I look forward to seeing your creations. And next week, we will look at the next in our series of lovely animals. We're going to look at the bumblebee. So I, I'll look forward to seeing you then. In the meantime, stay safe, make sure you listen to your parents and, uh, and have a good week. Bye.